thanks for coming, guys. Um, so just after lunch, I hope you guys had coffee, right? Right? We're in for a whirlwind. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's I should have I should have supplied. I owe you I owe you all of you a coffee. Okay. So so yes, I do. Um, so we have a whirlwind of a presentation, as I as I would like to call it. We have about uh, 50 slides to go in 30 slide 30 minutes. So we'll we'll fly through them. Um, and I'm I'm very eager to actually you know wait outside and take you through, through some of the boards and hardware that I have and actually dig dig deeper and share some of the some of the th things that we've been seeing um, as well. So after this, so without further uh, ado, um, I s let's get started. Um, Adi Gangidi, I work for Rackspace. I'm a senior systems design engineer at Rackspace. Um, I also am the lead engineer for the Zayas Battle IG2 program from the Rackspace perspective. Um, so we collaborate with the Google folks quite a bit um, on this design. Um, and uh, I'm here to talk about the Zayas Battle IG2 platform, um, as it's called, and the accelerator ecosystem surrounding it. So I'm going to cover a little bit of both the mother side of, motherboard side of it and, and the system side of it, and then uh, the accelerator side of it, essentially. Um, and uh, so let's get started. Um, so I'm, I'm dividing this talk essentially into two parts, as I just said. Um, you know, development update a little bit, and development and technology update, and then the accelerators are the second second part of it. I have some samples here, uh, some accelerator cards, some you know boards that help su support the uh, accelerators. Um, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have pictures of them, and then I'll point out to them whenever they come up. So uh, I'm going to briefly introduce the program. Uh, the Zays and Barrel IG2 program was uh, started in 2016, uh, 2016 essentially. A huge collaborative effort between uh, various partners and um, and open foundations. Um, and and you know uh, we that was a block diagram that we had. You know, it just started with just that block diagram, a high level kind of concept of it. Um, then last year, uh, 2017 at OCP at Open Compute Summit, we um, showed off the first samples. Um, the first samples usually are red boards, um, as you can see, um, and uh, and we kind of described all the uh, open and emerging technologies that we're we're planning to or we were building uh, this server on. Um, so we, we did a little deep dive. Uh, I, I do have that uh, recording of the video at the end of the talk, and I'm going to distribute these slides so uh, to kind of go through a little bit de deeper. Um, in, tw in 2018, we're right here um, to talk about a little bit of a high-level update of the program and. Uh, uh, accelerator ecosystem. Uh, we have few announcements here and there to make. Uh, uh, nothing fancy, just just a lot of hardware, uh, cool things. Um, and and um, uh, I'll point out to them whenever they come up. So, so what is Zayas and Barrel IG2, right? These words, right? What what do they, what do they actually mean, right? So Zayas is the motherboard. It's a common motherboard between uh, Google and Rackspace. Um, it's a basically a two-socket Power9 server. Um, it's got 48 volts input. Uh, you know, most servers today, as you know, have 12 volts input, um, and or at least most open compute servers have 12 volts input. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's built for front I/O uh, and service access. Again, that uh, open compute um, uh, ethos kind of coming in um, and and shaping the system around. Uh, we have 80 lanes of PCIe Gen 4 and 32 lanes of uh, OpenCAPI or NVLink 2.0. Um, so I want to put that in numbers perspective a little bit. PCIe Gen 4 is twice as fast as Gen 3, as you know. Um, and OpenCAPI is you know, roughly th three times as fast as um, Gen 3 in terms of bandwidth right, uh, per lane. Um, so if you add that together, and, and this is real bandwidth that you can use, it's essentially 250 lanes of PCIe Gen 3. right? That's a lot of I.O. Um, and, and we think, or you know, I'll share some of the observa observations later, and this is not just line rate. Uh, um, and this platform actually has strong enough cores to actually support that I.O., move that I.O. back and forth. Um, so the server is also built on uh, open ethos, essentially. So it's not just, like, say, open hardware. Um, you know, this is an op being an open compute motherboard and server, all these specs and, and sheets, everything that, you know, um, uh, online, it's it's available. Uh, I like to say this to people, you know, who kind of understand, uh, want to understand how open really it is. So if you do have a PCB manufacturer, if you have, if you are a PCB manufacturer, you can just take that design essentially, and and you know, with the li appropriate licenses, you can build it yourself essentially. It's it's that open um, essentially, right? Um, so on the left, you have these days shelf and uh, and sled. Um, it, this is the Google form factor of that motherboard. Uh, it's a 13-inch form factor. It's a little bit, I think, custom to them. 
um, and it's a 1.5 OU tall server. Um, and uh, it's, it's a compact enclosure, essentially, of the motherboard, right? Uh, it's shorter um, than what it can fit in half-height, half half-length cards. Um, it's compatible with 48 volts open rack, but um, you ne do need like a deployment shelf that, that goes around it to kind of make it wide enough, essentially 13, 13 inches to 21, and then um, uh, you know, the, the depth, essentially, to increase it to, to fit it in the open rack. Um, on the on the right, you have the Battle IG2 server. Um, it's, it's basically built for full depth open rack V2, as I as I want to call it. Uh, it's a two OU tall server, so we we, we can uh, you know easily fit half height half length cards, and for full full height full length cards as well, we can we can fit them with a riser. Essentially, we build a riser um, to support that. Uh, we have hot swap storage. I'm going to speak to what's special about the storage in a little bit. Uh, we have enough wattage plan to support accelerators. Uh, the motherboard itself is is a little bit tailored around supporting uh, supporting the the processors, DIMMs, and and some of the I/O. Uh, but but as you know, some of the GPUs and, and and latest accelerators they need more more and more power. They're very power hungry. So we have provisions for supporting that. So uh, these are the couple of risers I was telling you about. Um, you know that helps you support all these accelerators um, here. Um, so now um, I'm going to go to a little bit of a development update. Uh, this is basically what Rackspace is doing uh, to consume this uh, a high level update of what Rackspace is doing to consume this solution and uh, and also in in I guess in uh, in that direction it will also help other people consume the system. So we started with this design. This is a, this is a picture of 3D render we started with. Uh, I like to start with this. Um, uh, so this is the motherboard. And behind that, uh, it's an expander board. Um, and then behind the expander board, you have a fan or power board that essentially supplies all the power to uh, you know, storage and GPUs and things like that. Uh, and then we have a backplane, a universal backplane. I'll talk to that a little bit more in a little bit. Uh, but you know, th these are the boards that, that you know, if you kind of open the server, the parallelized server, this is how the boards would lay out to be in th this orientation. So we started with this. We went to this. Um, you know, the, this is one of the test ports, uh, DVT board um, uh, that we start. You know, we you know uh, started testing uh, uh, the hardware with. Um, you know, we made a lot of optimizations through the way. Uh, we found out a few tweaks and things that could improve. Um, you know, uh, more support and and you know long-term uh, reliability of of, of 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 workloads and things like that. Um, so we optimized all those. And then we have green boards, right? So green boards are exciting for anyone who does hardware development. Um, they just represent all the time and effort that's kind of gone into optimizing their design. And 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 you know the designs right now in a, in a it indicates that the designs in a uh, polished state, if you will, right? Um, so I do have the green board here. Um, I think you've seen pictures of of the board in the morning as well. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, this is one of the I'd like to. Uh, point out that this is probably one of the first five motherboards or so that's that's here. Um, it's very 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 new. It's right now, uh, just just right out of factory. Um, so so you have a new motherboard, right? A 48 volts motherboard, and you have a processor. You have a new processor, just G8, right? Um, and then you have lots of I/O, cool I/O like uh, PCIe Gen 4, OpenCAPI, NVLink 2.0, right? Uh, so we talked about that. We've heard about that multiple number of times. But you know, how do we actually use these things, right? Um, you need to go through basically I/O qualification phase of things, right? Um, for for actually using all these subsystems, um, you know, through this I/O, right? Um, and and that can be pretty challenging, right? Anyone who works for an OEM or ODM would attest to the fact that qualification takes a lot of time, you know, to get the driver right, firmware right, you know, get the test plan passed, and things like that. So as kind of early adopters of this platform. Um, and what we're trying to do is basically uh, qualify, in, in some cases, not one, uh, not two, but uh, you know, in some cases, three different uh, alternatives in each subsystem, right? Um, and, and this is not just uh, you know, uh, only, to, only subject to networking. Um, we're extending that all the way through in all the subsystems, right? And, and I think we think that's, that's really interesting, and it'll really help the adoption of the platform, uh, not just in, within Rack space, but outside as well. Um, just highlighting that you know we kind of have those sources and all the subsystems, um, including the accelerator subsystems. Um, you know, I think you know one more uh, reason why we're doing this. You know, a lot of, we're playing with this much I/O is we don't we, we want to play with um, 
you know, we, we want to we use this system for solving various kind of workloads. Um, that means workloads today, um, you know, traditional workloads, and, and more emerging workloads as well. So that's why some of the categories of the, of the I.O. are more important for one versus the other. And, and we, you know, we qualify both. Uh, we want to provide future flexibility as well um, for our product teams within Rackspace. Um, and, you know, some of these, um, you know, cool, cool I.O. Um, in, in they, there are, there are the workloads that can take advantage of it are still coming together. Um, so, so that um, that kind of uh, you know we're trying to think of you know the future as well and qualify some of them. It's obviously going to decre decrease adoption time for people who are, who are interested in the system as well. So, uh, one of the challenges uh, are 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 newness in 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 consuming this platform is uh, it's an open compute platform and that's not a big deal uh, open compute is deployed for a long time right uh, but but um, you know this is a 48 volt system right so you need a 48 volt track right um, so these you know uh, and and we need a 48 volt power shelf as well and the power shelves um, you know that are available today the early 48 volts power shelves um, they come up with something called um, uh, something called a battery backup, essentially, uh, that, that way of doing things, versus for rack space. And, and I think I know for a few other companies as well, it's important to have uh, you know, local rack-level redundancy uh, with an ATS. So you know, those are the ATS modules. So that solution didn't exist uh, before, um, as far as I understand. So what we did was we partnered with uh, Delta um, uh, and, and came up with that power shelf with an integrated ATS. Uh, we have the shelf in our lab. Uh, that's a picture of the shelf in the lab. Um, and it's up and running. So, um, so you have server, you have I/O, um, uh, you have uh, a power shelf. Um, you need a rack. Um, so, and so we built a rack. Uh, we integrated the power shelf. You know, loaded with all the systems. We tested that. Um, you know, uh, I like to kind of abstract this away, the detail and stuff. But you know, just for fun, um, you know, even to get this 48 volts open rack clip. We had to go through multiple revisions and, and get it actually, you know, bang on and get the alignment between the clip and the bus bar. Um, uh, so, so you know, there's the devil is in the details, but um, it, it's up and running, and you know, things are things are working. So that's exciting, right? So um, I want to point out a little bit in the past few slides of the development update and put it in perspective, right? Um, Rackspace has been playing with the uh, open platforms for you know about seven years now, right? We started with uh, open compute, we went to open power, we did the power eight barrel eye, uh, and then you know we are with the power nine uh, uh, system right now here, um, and and you know we started playing in accelerators, open capi, and wheeling accelerators a little bit um, last year, um, and then. So later this year, when we do a pilot phase with some limited customers in our data centers, what we'd be doing essentially is we'd be putting all these three philosophies and learnings, all of them into into this, um, you know, uh, the Battle IG2, uh, uh, basically uh, products or, or whatever that comes on top of it, and that's kind of pretty exciting. You know, things take time, but they do come together essentially. So um, now I'm going to go a little bit more into the technology update. Um, so, um, you know, what are some of the cool technologies here, right? So there's a lot of innovation happening in the data centers, various subsystems, uh, you know, serviceability, accelerators, networking, things like that. Um, and, and because of the slowdown of the Moore's law, uh, what, what ha what's happening is there's, you know, there's increased push for, for innovating in all these areas. It's pretty easy nowadays to find a server that innovates in one or two of these areas. But what, you know, what we've done, I think this system is basically trying to innovate in all of them. I've tried to push boundaries in all of them. And the reason why we did that, it's, 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 a, it's risky, but the reason why we did that is because for these new technologies to become truly mainstream, um, you, need, you need them to play along with each other. Um, so they, these are obviously too many uh, in number to kind of talk through the 30 minutes. So I'll concentrate on these four um, subsystems here. So, um, so um, the first one is PCIe Gen 4, right? So we have, uh, like I was saying, 80 lanes of PCIe Gen 4, uh, four by 16 slots. One of them is an OCP mesh form factor. So basically a low-rise form factor that helps you support uh, some of the other high, you know, full-length cards and things like that. Um, so, um, so we have four by, by 16 slots, as I said, and two by 8 slots. So to give you a little bit of perspective, each by 16 slot um, uh, can can at a you know theoretically do 250 gigabits per second at, at line rate right so it can pay with uh, 250 gigabits per second and that's that's basically twice as fast as Gen 3. 
Um, so we wanted to put this to test a little bit, right? So we plugged kind of a couple of our net, you know main networking cards. They're an OCP mess form factor. Um, uh, they're from Mellanox. They're basically Mellanox uh, Connect X fives. Um, you know, if you plug this into a Gen three system, you would have roughly clocked out um, about you know and run an IPUF test about ninety four gigabits per second worth of usable bandwidth. And um, you know what we you know we we ran a little bit of IPUF demo. What we measure is essentially one eighty seven gigabits per second. So it's not just like say line rate, but it's actual usable data, uh, usable bandwidth essentially. Um, uh, so um, the other. Um, the other uh, card that we tested with, we didn't want to just you know stop testing or, or stop uh, you know testing Gen 4 with a network. We took a storage card. Uh, we, we took an uh, Editacom NVMe, NVMe Express card. Uh, we plugged it into our system, um, and if we, this was a Gen 3 system, uh, the FIO would have clocked about 6.8 gigabits per second uh, versus you know uh, what we measure is 13.5 uh, or so gigabytes per second, which is essentially double again. So so both on networking end and storage end, things are coming together on PCIe Gen 4. So this is one card, right? Often, you know, when you know platforms promise too much I.O., what they do is 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 you know they you know when you plug a few cards it'll be fine. But if you want to plug more, you know, if you want to actually really use all the bandwidth, it's really hard to you know um, to actually push that and you'll have to do all kinds of optimizations and one-off fixes to get that bandwidth. Um, so I wanted to test this, so I picked a heap of uh, Connect X5 cards, uh, Mellanox Connect X5 cards, plugged them all through the system, essentially, right? Um, you can see, you know, I've not been seen, I think, seen so many Mellanox cards in the same system, uh, at least I haven't. And um, all of them trained to Gen, Gen, Gen 4, which is 16 gigatransfers per second. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I plug two servers. You can't just really test networking with one server. So I picked two servers, uh, plugged all those cards, uh, connected them to a 100 gig switch, uh, and ran a demo, an IPUF demo. Um, and uh, based on these numbers, uh, uh, I like to say uh, that we're pretty confident uh, based on these numbers and aggregating them. We can essentially run uh, one terabits per second uh, network bandwidth on this system. Uh, without really running into bottleneck, uh, so the real ba real bandwidth uh, will be pretty close to it. Usually, typically about 94 percent, 93 percent of that, and that's uh, that's okay. But the fact that we are able to push it uh, speaks to uh, not just like say you know I/O on the system, but also the strong cores that basically support it. So I have a little bit of recipe here uh, if you want to do it at home, uh, if you want to repeat this experiment at home, but. Um, but it's, it's really cool. It's, it's a t testament for, for many things coming together. So, so um, the, you know, you have cards, you have storage cards, you have you know, systems, you have uh, uh, network cards, right? But you know, if you don't have Gen 4 switches, right, it's hard to kind of take advantage of that, especially um, you know, the, these two subsystems, the GPU expansion and storage expansion, they've long been kind of like, say, running into bottlenecks um, because, of, because of this. Uh, because you know Gen 3, right? Gen 3 speeds. So uh, we're partnering with Broadcom. Uh, they've just announced that they will start shipping their Gen 4 switches today. Um, so we are uh, one of the first servers. Uh, those um, those uh, Gen 4 switches would be open systems, at least uh, that'll be tested on, and we'll try and enable th those in on our platform. Those Gen 4 switches, and that'll mean to uh, both of these subsystems quite a bit. Uh, you know, removing that bottleneck. Um, you know uh, the battle IG2 storage. Um, um, it's it's a, it's a topic on its own. Uh, you could talk about it quite a bit. Um, uh, so what we did is basically uh, we added support uh, for for this system to support SAS, SATA, and NVMe lanes in the same slot. Um, that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of different people using the system, and different products being built on it, and things like that. Uh, you could have a tired storage of few NVMe drives, few SAS drives, few SATA drives, or something like that. Uh, essentially, uh, more flexibility. Uh, it, you know, if you're interested more to find out, uh, you might have to fly San Jose. But I'm giving a deep, deep dive into uh, deep dive into the storage subsystem um, at OCP, um, and. Uh, uh, this is really cool. The the concepts embedded in this system can be actually used in any open power system, any open compute system, uh, specifically the storage aspects of it. 
So um, now uh, I want to talk a little bit about the 48 volts part of it. Um, so you know, this is one of the you know first systems with uh, 48 volts point of load uh, support on it. So the point, of the the two subsystems that support the point of load are CPUs and and memory today. Uh, we, we do have uh, in the um, you know in the extended system we do have a little bit of a power board um, that can um, c that can convert to you know some of the aspect of the incoming power to 48 volts and the others to the 12 volts. Um, so say for example, if the GPUs uh, move to 48 volts, um, then you, all you would have to do is respin that fan board, and and you'll be able to support you know instead of 12 volts GPUs, 48 volts. Um, you don't have to respin the motherboard at all. It's very scalable and efficient that way. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit of Open Capi. We're uh, going to the accelerator land now. Um, um, so we have two Open Capi sockets per uh, per processor. Um, each, uh, uh, so all four of them put together, uh, you have about 100 gigabytes of uh, uh, bandwidth uh, at line rate. Uh, that's 800 gigabits per second, essentially, right? Um, and they use, uh, you know, standard slim SAS, uh, SAS 4.0 connectors to uh, to kind of uh, deliver that bandwidth. Um, we're doing a lot of cool work here in terms of, you know, being uh, one of the one of the, the first adopters and of the open CAPI uh, accelerators. We're doing a lot of uh, good work with Amphenol um, in, you know, in, in developing cables of different lengths, um, you know, developing in-system tests for 25 gig and things like that. Uh, th those sound uh, a little bit boring, you know, cables, connectors and stuff, but uh, for some of these new technologies to get mainstream, uh, all those are very essential. So with that said, um, I have a little bit of demo again uh, for uh, Open Capi. Um, so we plugged four Open Capi cards in the system, um, and then um, I ran a real bandwidth test. This is not a line rate test, but real bandwidth test, right? So um, pretty quick demo. Run a script uh, that moves data in and out, and these are you know each uh, each window running uh, workload on each of these systems, and what you'll quickly see is uh, you know 22 gigs per um, per link, so it's essentially, I'll summarize here, is, uh, you know, you can support four open CAPI cards with SI of uh, 25.78, uh, round trip latency of 80 milliseconds, it's like 80 nanoseconds, uh, which is essentially about four to five times lower than PCIe, um, you know, the bandwidth test I just showed you guys, um, and it's coherent, so no kernel overhead, overhead for moving some of the data. So these three things, the, the round trip latency, the, the increased bandwidth, uh, and, and no kernel overhead. It's like a trifecta, essentially. And they have just have a, a upstream driver. Um, so it, you know, very soon you'll be able to make use of PCIe, uh, you know, open CAPI accelerators just as, uh, as if they were PCIe accelerators. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, I like to call them the, the cool PCIe, right? So accelerators are coming in different form factors. I have just pictures for those. Uh, we've testing uh, those accelerators in different form factors. You know, perpendicular mount, just PCIe only accelerators. Uh, perpendicular mount, open CAPI accelerators that cap cable into the server. You know, we're testing those as well. Uh, there's a little bit of gap here in terms of, like, say, how the connector placement is done on different connect on different uh, uh, accelerators, and that's a little bit of a gap and and a, and a, a blocker for mainstream adoption because uh, you know uh, it'll be hard to put it in some systems, fit it in some systems. Uh, if you want to sit, fit more of these cards in the same system, it gets a little bit of hassle. So, you know, as a part of Open Power, and you know, maybe even reach out to Open Compute and Open Capi Foundations, uh, we need to kind of work together to have a little bit more reference document, um, if you will, to put together um, some of the details of where these things should be, where these connectors should be. Um, we're also testing with some parallel mount accelerators. Um, uh, uh, these are uh, examples of these are essentially like NVLink um, GPUs, um, uh, or Xilinx announced some HBM2 FPGA, FPGAs today. Those are most likely going to be in this form factor as well. Uh, we're testing those as well. Uh, we've built some boards, some hardware to support these accelerators as well. Um, um, you know, this is just an overview of the all different form factors and how they cable in and the real world implementations of those. So uh, the PCIe accelerators uh, that we are testing with. Um, um, are you know the Volta V100s? I don't have to explain you the features of I guess uh, Volta V100. It's widely uh, known. It's a perfect card for deep learning. Uh, it's a perfect GPU for deep learning, if you will. There's uh, other implementations as well, ASIC-based implementations. Um, and and another card that we're testing with uh, PCIe accelerator is a 
uh, storage accelerator from Nalatech. Um, it essentially uh, comes in two form factors, uh, cabled or onboard storage. And, um, and, and it's a Gen 4 by 8 card. It's really good for uh, coherent mem memory expansion um, and you know, implementing accelerated NoSQL databases. Um, this is you know, one of the cool things. Um, we built a little bit of uh, uh, SXM2, uh, SlimSAS to SXM2 interposer um, to bring CPU to GPU and VLink in an open compute form factor. I think this is the first open compute implementation of it. Um, you know, all these bandwidth numbers uh, that I spoke for OpenCAPI uh, hold good for uh, NVLink as well. And um, you know, additional to the uh, deep learning models, uh, specifically this implementation, I think would be really good for GPU analytics and uh, large deep learning models, essentially, because of that high bandwidth. Um, what this means is basically, um, you can probably start seeing a new generation of uh, uh, JBOG implementations based on um, CPU to GPU and VLink. They don't exist once today, and JBOGs are becoming really, um, you know, mainstream. Um, so you know, we'll start seeing that. Um, as 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 one of these as an extension of these first uh, NVLink on wire kind of an implementation. So we're trying, we're, we're playing with uh, three um, open CAPI accelerators as well. Uh, the flash storage accelerator from uh, Molex. Uh, this is kind of uh, you know an extension of what Mara said in the in the morning. Uh, you know this 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 these these are the kind of like say boards that enable you uh, a new class of storage essentially with the latency that's somewhere between traditional storage and and traditional memory. Uh, so that new tier of um, storage um, and the Innova 2 flex card is is uh, is perfect for network acceleration essentially, and the Alpha Data card is something that we've been use, using for since you know we've been playing with OpenCAPI. It's a perfect uh, development platform. It offers a lot of uh, board support package resources. Uh, it's, it's good for like HPC market analysis kind of applications, smart NIC, inference, things like that. So um, I, I just put this picture to kind of summarize all those features and the accelerators. Essentially, these are very complex systems, um, and they're almost servers on their own or systems on their own. Um, so you need to be very careful about how you program to them, and it can be a little bit challenging and overwhelming in, in their adoption. So that's where we're doing some work with these frameworks, these four frameworks. Uh, the first one is Snap. Uh, it's an open source um, framework, development framework. Um, it helps you program in high level um, code for various workloads, and it kind of converts them to local, uh, low level languages. Um, and you know, Power AI and Capy Flash are um, IBM implementations and IBM solutions to make uh, deep learning and uh, databases as a service, database as a service, very easily deployable, and also take advantage of the accelerators like GPUs and, and FPGAs. Um, you can also talk to solution providers if you don't, if you're not in the business, or if you don't have enough resources to write all that code yourself. You can leverage uh, some of these companies to essentially, um, you know, write solutions for you. And these are a the couple of companies that we've partnered with, but there are a bunch of uh, other partners that the board manufacturers are partnering with. You can talk to them as well. Um, so that said, I'd like to put this graphic. Um, it's a it's a Battle IG2 server. Uh, it's a Zayas motherboard. It's all the all the cool I/O that's supported on it, um, and and you know it's a beautiful system, right? I wouldn't have, it's 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 it's, it's it wouldn't have come together. It wouldn't. I can't stress enough. It wouldn't have come together without all these uh, companies uh, putting significant resources on it. I also want to take a moment to kind of thank thank the fame uh, the faces behind these companies and about 250 engineers or so that did a rough count um, that contributed to the system coming here. Um, I want to thank all these foundations that have laid ground for such groundbreaking, such huge scale uh, collaboration between various companies. It would have been really hard to do that. Um, uh, we're solving bottlenecks. We're easing adoption, we're doing that together, uh, together with collaboration. So I hope you join us on a first class accelerated flight um, and, and, and you know, join us in, you know, for a comfortable uh, acceleration uh, environment. Um, if you don't, you might have to do something like this, something like this to get on that flight and to catch up. Uh, so maybe you want to avoid it. Uh, maybe it's good to leave this for the movies. Um, so if you want to learn more, I uh, have the last year's talk um, um, that goes deep dives into deep dives into a lot of technologies. I have all the resources uh, uh, that you can uh, find more information 
on um, if you want to participate, if you want to be a, if you're a system developer, or if you want to enable this system for mass consumption, um, talk to talk to me, and I will put you in touch with the the right people who can help you with that. Um, the design package is you know upstream on the Open Compute website, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you.